The FIA really can't help themselves, can they? If you've been watching the F1 for a long time, you will know that it is not an F1 season without the FIA getting involved and changing something. Last year, there was massive controversy around the dreaded porpoising, and this year, it looks like there will be more meddling. But what could the FIA possibly want to change now? Well, it seems like the new change could have significant effects for all teams and could be catastrophic for some. The FIA have also sent out a warning to F1, and it's not looking great. Want to know what the new change that the FIA is bringing and who it will affect the most? Also, what could the FIA possibly have to say to FOM? Well, it's not great with the FIA finally putting its foot down. There's a saying that goes, if it's not broke, then don't fix it. And sometimes you have to wonder if F1 would just implement this as the FIA and FOM love meddling in the pinnacle of motorsport that is F1. Now, we're not saying that all changes are bad. Most of the time, they are for the good of the sport. The new sprint format, even the technical directives they implemented for porpoising, was just to protect the drivers, even though most people thought they were just bought in for Mercedes's benefits, though that is a discussion for another day. It's not just us viewers that get over the FIA and FOM meddling, but the drivers are also pretty vocal too, in particular George Russell, and even called for the FIA and FOM to look into the latest extreme wet tires. That extreme tire is a complete waste of time at the moment, and I think it should just be parked. If the conditions are too wet for intermediates, they should enforce that we have to wait until the conditions get better, said Russell. Russell's view on the topic was later echoed by Verstappen, who insisted that most drivers would always prefer to use the intermediates over the extreme wets, no matter how dangerous the conditions may be. We pit for inters, and within a lap it almost becomes undrivable on an inter, and we opted to go to an extreme. The problem we have at the moment is the intermediate is basically too good compared to the extreme, so even when there's a downpour like that, you still actually want to be on an inter because it's faster. But at one point there were so many drivers on the track that it just becomes incredibly dangerous, explained Verstappen. Well, could this be the next rule change that we see? We can't tell you as it seems like the FIA don't really know what they're doing when it comes to what rules they want to change and when they are going to change them. I mean, look at the most recent tire blanket change that was supposed to be revolutionary, but really it turned out to be a fast and as quick as it was brought in, it was shut down. Now, the latest change is not exactly new, but something that was brought up over a month ago with many not taking much notice of it, but the FIA's senior race director advisor, Herbie Blash says finding tricks to test the F1 regulations has become a great deal harder. Flexi wings are still a suspicious area. The tricks today now, basically they're all computerized, he said, and obviously the cars are scrutineered from top to bottom now, even down to the radiuses, etc. I think the only area that I would question today is maybe the flexing of wing elements. That's however much weight the FIA have to put on the wings, when you actually look on a TV on an onboard shot, you can actually see the wings move, said Herbie Blash. Now, I want you to cast your memories back to 2021. The competition between Max and Lewis is heating up and we're heading into a great season. Then all of a sudden, there was an issue with the rear wings of cars flexing too much. There was no formal protest, but Mercedes had brought it up in a couple of interviews. The Red Bulls are really fast on the straights, he said. They have this bendy wing on the back of their car, which they put on today, and they gained at least three tenths from this wing, said Hamilton. The rear wing change caused quite a stir in the F1 world, as many felt as if Red Bull had been unfairly targeted when they had already passed the FIA's inspection and felt that under Article 3.9 of the 2021 FIA F1 technical regulations, which covers bodywork flexibility and details the rules, and allowances for bodywork flex under reasonable loads of pressure in FIA tests, they did not need to change their rear wing. Well, how wrong they were, as they said the rest was history and Red Bull had to change their their wing. The latest rule change has nothing to do with the rear wing, but still involves the wing, but this time it's the front wing of the car, with many believing this is to be two years too late, as even back in 2021, the front wings were bending all over the place. According to reports, it's understood that several teams, including Aston Martin, were advised to make changes to their front wing designs around the time of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix in a bid to ensure that they did not fall foul of any rule breaches. This now explains Aston 
Aston Martin's sudden drop in performance, as this year, Aston Martin were off to a flying start until something changed around the time of the British Grand Prix. Fernando Alonso blamed their drop of performance on the new tyre compounds that Pirelli had issued, though a number of reports have since suggested that the team were leaned on by the FIA over their flexi front wing. But as part of a ramped up effort to stop any attempt at getting around the regulations, the FIA has now issued a formal technical directive outlining what it believes are unacceptable designs with regards to flexible bodywork. F1 can be a confusing sport, and just in case anyone was wondering, technical directives outline how regulations should be applied. As technology develops and the competitive push of teams takes development in directions that may have not been envisioned when the regulations were written, so TDs are then used by the governing body to control developments. So now, what exactly have the FIA said? As reported by the media, TD018 states the following. The FIA states that it believes that outfits are exploiting regions of purposely designed localized compliance, plus relative motion between adjacent components, to deliver a significant boost to aerodynamic performance. It states that any design that operates like this is a breach of Article 3.2.2 of F1's technical regulations, which states that all components that influence a car's aerodynamic performance must be rigidly secured in a mobile, with respect to their frame of reference defined in Article 3.3. Furthermore, these components must produce a uniform, solid, hard, continuous, impervious surface under all circumstances. You're probably wondering just the same as we are. Why now? What exactly has changed? Well, it's to be believed that the FIA have been forced to take action after they believe the teams have cheated the system by using sophisticated systems that rotate and flex their front and rear wing elements in ways that cannot be detected through the regular load tests. It has been made clear that any assembly designs that exploit localized compliance or degrees of freedom are not permitted. It has also outlined four key areas where it believes the teams are in breach or are being illegal, and they are 1. Wing elements that can translate vertically, longitudinally, or laterally relative to the bodywork that they are fixed to. 2. Wing elements that can rotate relative to the bodywork that they are fixed to, such as rotating around one fixing. 3. Designs that utilize elastometric fillets, compliant sections of wing profile, or thin flexible laminates at a junction that can either distort, deflect out the plane, or twist to permit localized deflection relative to the bodywork the component is attached to. Clearly, it has taken some time, but the FIA now clearly understands how the F1 car designs and assembly methods are defeating their load tests. 4. Designs that utilize soft trailing edges to wing elements to prevent localized cracking as the result of component assembly deflection. Now, the real question that we have is who will this affect the most? With many people not certain, but let's take a deeper dive into the matter. One thing for certain is that TDs at this point of the season are unfair on any team. Why do you ask? Well, it's to do with the budget cap. For the FIA to okay a part and then come back halfway through the season must be infuriating and at the same time very costly. It should be forbidden to take such changes in the middle of the season, except for when all teams agree or if there is a serious and real safety issue, unlike the one we had last year. That would be better, but I guess the counter argument is that they shouldn't have tried to bend the rules in the first place. But who from the teams will be most affected? Of course, Red Bull Racing's guru designer, Lord Newey, may have a number of these methods at the heart of his all-conquering RB19, but only time will tell which team's performance is affected the most. The regulation will only come into effect from the Singapore Grand Prix onwards, which ironically allows flexible bodywork and Monza, the circuits where it is most beneficial of all of the season. The other team that may be in trouble is Mercedes, with the Silver Arrows having noticeably more flex in their front wing than most. All of you are going to say, how do you know that? Well, I want you to focus on Mercedes' front wing and see how it flexes at Monza. And if we are wrong, you can let us know in the comments. Right now, it's very difficult to tell who will be most affected, but it could well be everyone or no one, and only time will tell. In the meantime, we're curious to know, who do you think will be most affected by this ruling? Now, the FIA and FOM don't have the best relationship, and it looks like the FIA have taken a further dig in their latest comments. 
We need respect, recognition for the FIA and fairness. We're getting there. I had good meetings with Stefano regarding it and he's aligned with the needs of the FIA. The Concord Agreement is two and a half years away, but there are three stakeholders, FIA, FOM and the teams. It has to be fair on all of us. We're not going to create obstacles. We're here to go forward together, but we can't go forward if it's unfair, said Ben Salayem.